So glad you could be here for another great episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get started. Wintertime is heating up on Broadway with the arrival of Some Like It Hot. It's a new musical comedy based on Billy Wilder's iconic film. It still takes place back in the day, but there are some pretty cool updates for a modern audience, thanks to a stellar creative team. Paul's here with the story. That's right, Tamsin. Emmy-nominated comedy queen Amber Ruffin is making her Broadway debut alongside the Inheritance Tony winner Matthew Lopez as co-book writers of Some Like It Hot. I sat down with the delightful duo to find out about bringing this fan favorite movie to the stage in 2022. I'm fans of yours individually for your work, and now look at you're, you're together on Broadway. Yay! Yeah. Two great tastes that go great together. <laughs> you know, a lot of writing collaborations, you know, people sometimes who write shows together are like, we met in college 25 years ago. We've been working together forever. We're just here now. But you two obviously came together in a very different way. What did you connect? with each other on when you finally did start working together? I mean, I think it was just this shared desire to make the show that we made. I mean, you never want to like talk about starting a project from the, the negative, which is like, we don't want to do this, we don't want to do that. But when you're making some like it hot for a 21st century audience, you inevitably go to like, well, it's not going to be this, and it's not going to be that, and it's not going to be that. And then once we had just sort of like cleared all the things that it wasn't going to be, we then sort of looked at what it could be. Yeah. I think it was just this shared desire to take something familiar and completely remake it and make it something um, that is celebratory and, and, and inclusive and respectful and fun! <gasps> fun, 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 fun. That's, I mean, at, at the end of the day, if it ain't fun, then no one's gonna come. So let's talk about the history of this property. People know, obviously, some like a hot. People obviously love this story. Yeah, this show has a ton of history yeah. and people love it and pass that love down from generation to generation yeah. and that is like where we are so lucky so it is an honor to get to take the thing so many people love and rip it up into one million pieces <laughs> and then reassemble it <laughs> to be completely different there is nothing funnier than people in over their heads like there's nothing funnier and in the case of like in the movie there's nothing funnier than idiots in trouble yeah. like idiots in trouble is funny the idea is to take idiots in trouble and make it for a 21st century audience it's the same things they know and love about the story yeah. but this is also a movie that was created by um billy wilder and il diamond right they wrote a bunch of beautiful hilarious classic hollywood comedies but you know cis white dudes Right? They didn't look like us. They didn't look like you, yeah. right. And so you have brought yourselves and your lived experience to this, which is exciting. You know, I've said in the past that like, yesterday's ahead of the curve is today's behind the curve. You know, the biggest difference that I think is between our, our show and, and the movie is, I mean, first of all, it's Tony Curtis, Jack Lennon, and, and Marilyn Monroe. Like, I always say, like, they're they, good. Yeah, they, and they're also not available. Uh, so, <laughs> you have an opportunity to completely just change who these characters are and so with all three of the of the leads we just we we rethought them from scratch i mean i don't know how much of our own lived experience is in the show i think i think what is more to the point is that we are we are people who live in the world in the 21st century and we are people who don't resemble the people who made the movie originally or who made the first musical originally mm -hmm. and we have a different idea of what is funny and what isn't funny. Mm -hmm. And to the audience uh, for the original movie, two cis men in dresses was funny. Mm -hmm. I, neither of us think that's funny. So it's hard to make a joke out of something that you don't find funny. What I do think is funny is idiots in trouble. I mean, in the movie, the original movie, they didn't change, nobody changed really. They were the same people they were at the end as they were at the beginning. And we had an opportunity to take three characters and put yeah. them through the ringer and change their lives. And then suddenly it's a story about transformation. Then it's suddenly a story about who am I in the world and who am I in relationship to the people, in relation to the people in my life. And then it started to get really interesting for us. Amber, I wanna talk to you about joining this team. You joined the team at a time that there was a lot of talk about getting more diversity behind the scenes on Broadway and making sure that we were really telling stories with authenticity and new voices. This Some Like It Hot obviously has great diversity in the cast. Yeah. That was not in the film, which is yeah. amazing. I said yes to Some Like It Hot for two reasons. 
One, the team is outstanding. You yeah. know, you've got Mark and Scott and Casey and Matthew. So I, I did want to work with them because with the that's a yeah. once in a lifetime opportunity. Sure. You know, you'd be learning at, at such a rate. And I also said yes to this show because the lead is a black lady. <laughs> And then and that's it. I was like, oh my God, yeah. Uh, I'm getting to write for a uh, black woman on Broadway, I do want to do that. I hear a trumpet singing and then moonlight fills the sky. A trombone whispers softly and the clouds keep drifting by. But when a saxophone starts moaning while well, the moon drops out of view, to turn a dark shade of blue. So what was it like tackling the character of Sugar in yeah. 2022? Obviously Marilyn Monroe is her own thing. Yeah. And you're able to really look at it just as a character and, and a black woman. Yeah, you know, usually when you write a black person at all, it's kind of a tightrope walk because you know you can't get anywhere near any stereotypes, right? Mm -hmm. You can't be a little late or you're kind of the stereotype of lazy or you can't be a little loud or you're the stereotype of mean. Mm -hmm. So you have to walk this very odd tightrope. But this cast is so diverse that we just got to write a human being. And then she could just be all of the flaws and all of the good things. And you didn't have to do that normal yeah. you know, black person in a white show right. and then they have to be inauthentic. Mm -hmm. She could just be a, a human being. Mm -hmm. And it was an absolute delight. I also think one of the things that happened to the story after Amber joined was this, this idea really uh, that this is who we are when no one's watching. This is, this is, this is not the I idea of queerness, not the idea of blackness, not the idea of Latinidad. This is just simply who we are mm -hmm. on a train mm -hmm. about to rehearse. Mm -hmm. This is who mm -hmm. we are tired from a hard day's work. Mm -hmm. The idea of sort of like the matter of factness of life. That I think is one of the things that people are responding to the show to. Instead of writing the show through the white lens, we just got to write the show with no mm. freaking lens. It, yeah. it was, it's a delight. But you did write it through the lens of 2022. I mean, ah. modern sensibility, right? So we have to talk about Jerry. Jerry, I think, is the character that people are really gonna walk away being amazed by the journey of Jerry. What seems like a very modern story in terms of the conversations we're having as a society, but, but in a period piece, is that sort of interesting? It's simple. Our ideas of what a period piece are formed by the period in which that art was made, in which there are so many restrictions yeah. on, on who can tell what story and about, and about whom these stories are told. It isn't as if queer people just magically sprung up from the right. ground in 1969. Right. They were there <laughs> all along. Queer people, uh, non-binary people, yeah. trans people, a, a, and every 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 LGBTQIA uh, individual mm -hmm. was there on the planet Earth in 1933. They just didn't make movies about them. They didn't write novels about them. Yeah. We were not gone. We were just not talked about. Mm. And so the idea of a 21st century lens on this story is a bit of a misnomer. Mm. What it really is, is removing the 20th century lens from it. Mm. And if you remove the 20th century lens from the story, it automatically right. works today. And all we needed to do was just clean that lens.